and then the ones that they liked even less. You know. There you go. Level well, two, level live. two deportation. Yeah. Yeah, of course, we have to get our little banter in before we run the uh, the you actual really thing. I always do this. Right. It's like doing all the live shows. I let just the banter go because the banter's the best shit. So <laughs> then I'm like, oh, we got at some point we have to hit the live button. So well, guys, the, ready to start the show. Hey, everybody, Let's welcome to the live show on November eighth, twenty twenty five. So we're gonna do. Are we serious? Do you, like, we live? Yeah, we're, we're live. live. We're live, John. We're live. You want to say anything to the audience before I hit yeah. the intro? No, that's okay. Hey, thank good talking <laughs> with you. I'm glad you're here. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for slowing yeah. us up. All right, everybody. Thirty seconds. We're back. This is Two O F Entertainment. Welcome to the Lost Dollar Business Club, where we talk about business, 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 and not just business. We talk about what makes businesses go up and what makes businesses go down. If you're interested in businesses, this is what it is. We talk about the global economy. We talk about global politics. We talk about everything and anything business related that affects your life on a global scale as well as a local scale. And don't miss after the show, Lost and Found. And we are back. Ah, John's got the new screen. Wow, yeah. look at John. Look at you, buddy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Well, thank you. Thank you, John, for, for us yeah. doing that. It's, it's, um... Man, what, you know, John, we like it. Here's, this is how we're going to do the whole show today. <laughs> Just yeah. like this. But you yeah. know the problem, though, John. I like yeah. the screen, but the problem is, is that you you kind of, which I'm not complaining about, disappear. Um, <laughs> so depending on how you move, you're there and you're not there. You're like the invisible man. Yeah, you know, but I like yeah. it. Very nice. Very colorful. Oh, we thought, we, we, gotta get we, thought we, we thought we'd be very politically correct as well because the the uh, Lost Dollar Business Club um, virtual screens are available in white and black. Black and yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, orange. Okay. Orange All black. right. Well, uh, there we, you go. Well, the orange yeah. one will be next week. If anybody wants orange. an orange one, orange yeah, is yeah, orange one. Yes, we want yeah. the orange one. We gotta. We have yeah, to support yeah. the new president. Apparently, <laughs> so. Talking about the new president, Mr. Michael, what are we talking about? Well, today? we've got we, there. So, I mean, the, obviously, the president of the United States has a lot of influence over the business world of the world. And oh. uh, we want to focus on oh. this, the business of uh, the incoming president. Uh, because if you look at it, stock market went wild. Yep. AI regulation is up on the is, is up for grabs, which is a big one. Uh, Making Social Security benefits, overtime pay, and tips exempt from Actually, federal. Yeah, like activities. that. U.S. going back to uh, being a net exporter of energy, which in this case is oil. No, and next and next exporter of everything. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. World oh, yeah. War II oh, mentality. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know if that's possible. That, that, in, that of course is including bullshit because the next exporter of bullshit. Coming out of the U.S., but anyway, go further. Sorry. I mean, that, that that's probably been true for a lot longer than. Uh, than yeah. Any yeah. Yeah. Twenty twenty January twenty twenty five. It takes a new new a new tip. Yeah. Yeah. twist in the tail. So, so. So what else, Michael? Is that that's so? Let me. And I and know we're talking about China and, 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 some other and, the, and the reciprocal yeah. trade act, which is yeah. the uh, the tariff negotiations across the world. You tariff me, I tariff, I tariff you. you. That's, yeah. that's basically what it's. It's well, a, let me just let me just let me just say this. So, you know, because we believe in free speech, unlike Mr. Musk. Um, first of all, congratulations to the orange man, your campaign. Yes. And we said this yesterday on Vaguely True. You ran a, a most excellent campaign I'm from Ted and Bill's <laughs> Excellent Adventure. You ran a great campaign. You act. And like I said, I've said this on this show and other shows. I agree with a lot of what the Republicans have to say. The Democrats didn't really have a platform and the platform they had was fuzzy at best, in my opinion. Could be wrong. Yeah. So on the business well, side, I, very, let me finish. I, Don't say yeah. a word. I'm very excited on the business side as a capitalist that Mr. Trump is in the White House. I see what's going on with the stock market, AI, everything. So for me, monetarily, now, for me as someone who likes democracy, I'm uh, that's where I'm a little leery. It's kind of like I always joke about the book Mein Kampf. The first 400 pages is how you build a country. And then you turn to page 401, it goes, then you kill the Jews. That's where I had a problem with the book, right? The first 400 pages is great. It's how you build an infrastructure. So as long as we keep democracy and we have a and, and our constitution, and in 2008, when Mr. Trump's term is done and he leaves and doesn't come up with some cockamamie crap that why he has to be in power, then yes, I'm good with everything. 
I don't have a problem with this if he really wants to leave NATO, if he wants to give 60% tariffs to Mexico. Or I, don't, I, don't think he wanted, I don't think he ever, he, he really, he ever said that he actually wanted to leave NATO. That's an important... He told, well, he, he, told he actually did, Michael. He, he, he actually he, did. He, did. You know, he, only, he, did. He, only threatened, he only threatened if people weren't contributing to... Uh, no, he, he literally said in a speech a couple uh-huh. weeks ago that he said day one he's going to leave NATO. Now, yeah. the guy who's at the State Department that's leading his transition team um, has said that... He thinks that's rhetoric. He doesn't think that's actually true. But he said that the State Department's going to be like, Mr. President, maybe that's not such a good idea. Um, but he did put the fear of God into them, and I'm good with that. Um, and then, which he's doing globally well, now with everybody. I'd like also, because I've been an absolute critic of, of uh, Mr. Trump on, on this show and on many shows, but I'd like to congratulate him and his team, and I'd like to congratulate America by having a very democratic uh, election. And the people have spoken. And, you know, a bit like Brexit, which I which I didn't support either. We move on. And um, this, yeah, the whole thing about what he's going to do and what he's not going to do. Well, we'll have to see how that all uh, how that all rolls out. But, um, yeah, the people have spoken. And um, let's see what happens next. Well, he brought he brought on Susie Wiles. Yeah. The, his yeah. campaign manager as the White House chief of staff, the first woman, not that this matters, the first woman to hold that role. No, it's a, no, but, you know, David brought up a good point before the recording is that, right. uh, and, and Stephen, you vehemently disagree with it, but the idea that, you know, putting a woman in the, in the role of chief of staff is, is, is not necessarily excellent. monumental. It's excellent, but it's not necessarily monumental because... Maybe it's not really. We we've had women in in lots of high positions in government before. Yeah, but and we're quite, quite, and quite rightly so. Right, but we're quite a monos- right. we're a, a, a society that's male dominated. Like we're not India, where they had female prime minister. We're not the UK, where they had Margaret Thatcher. And we're not really sure if she was female or not. And then that other prime minister who lasted thirty eight days. Um, we're not Israel, where we had Golden Meir. Right, we're not those countries. We are very much. Um, a male-driven society. So her being chief of staff, I think, is excellent. And I think that is kudos um, to the Trump team to put her in place. But also, she is the adult in the room, I think, for the administration. And we said it's kind of tongue-in-cheek before the show, how long will she last? You know what I mean? It's like, we even make it to the inauguration. Um, but because I think she's the adult in the room, that may help us if you will, stay on a steady line. Um, well, she's, you know. she lasted long enough to uh, to sail him through what can only be seen as an incredibly successful election campaign, and he seemed and to be uh, and he seemed to be you know very grateful in his in his acceptance speech um, about the about her con- contribution. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but by by for, for what with the sort of feedback we're getting in Europe is that. That he was a surprise, probably the most surprised person in the room the first time round. I don't think he he, he kind of thought, "Oh, I'm now going to be president." But I didn't think he thought. But this time round, it would appear that the Democrats have been, after the Republicans have been slowly building a really good team to put to put around him, so he can uh, do something, uh, yeah, some something different going forward. But. How he's going to backtrack on all the, uh, you know, what? how far he'll have to backtrack on all the rhetoric that he said, oh, I'm going to do this from day one, I'm going to cut taxes, we're going to add, we're going to, I mean, the, the tariffs, for instance, which he's talking about, already exist. Only Biden put them in the, uh, he put them in the freezer. Um, and before that, Trump as well, they said, okay, right, you know, okay. So all the tariffs are already there, they're already ready to rock and roll, but whether or not he's going to switch them all, all back on again, and he's remarked that the tariffs won't lead to inflation is slightly bizarre because if you start charging Europeans or anybody outside the US 20, 30, 40% more for their product, hey ho, they're probably going to do the same for products they're going to sell to you. So, yeah, and, and in the meantime, all the stores will be empty because the US has offshored everything and you haven't had time yet to put in all those with made in you made in USA products in your warehouses and in your supermarkets. So let's see how the tariffs uh, pan out. And well, let me the, 
Sorry, but Coach, the, no, no, go ahead. Know, I'm gonna. There's a weird our, question from somebody watching, so I'll we'll ask. I'll give you their question when okay. John's done. John's done okay, the, the the tariffs, you know, yeah, okay, they're a one-time price increase. They don't lead to inflation. Uh, just a one-time. Of course they do, John. Of course they do. No, if, no, no. Actually, you know, when when Trump put the, the tariffs back in, you know, when he was in in office, we we didn't have a surge in inflation. The, the data there is back no, in 2016, doesn't support it. 2017. Yeah. Nope. Well, how can that how can that be? Just you think about it. you charge me twenty percent more, and yeah. I charge you twenty percent more. Who pick, yes. who picks up that slack? Are the share? Are the are the? It's are the a share, as I it? said. It, it's a, just a one-time pr price increase. It doesn't lead to you know continuous price increases. No, it doesn't. Yeah, so, but it, but it, but this thing about he's going to make things cheaper. It, yeah. If he puts up everything by twenty percent, and everybody that's that he's that has been imported, and it and vice versa, everything's twenty percent more expensive. Well, so look, who's yeah, pick, who's picking the, up the tab? The tariff. The, 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 the U.S. The U.S. consumer picks up the tab. Well, yeah. The the, okay. the Trump Happy tariffs were, were not put on. You know, they're they're in effect. Biden didn't repeal them. Didn't didn't turn them away. So the, the, those tariffs have been in place. Um, so it's, no, well they they don't. Get, no, I don't think. Uh, I heard. I was listening to a debate this morning about. They were saying that they haven't. A lot of them haven't been instigated. They were they were turned back down or, oh, or okay. not 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 pursued. But just left in the in the freezer. Yeah. Okay. But you know, if I, if twenty percent more is twenty percent more, and if the consumer's picking it up, how can that be better for the U.S. public? For 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 the what's what do you call it? Your your grocery book, your wallet, or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, yeah. you know, food, you know, which is most the, one of the items that that people pay for, that's not going to go up on the tariffs. Uh, you know, housing. Okay, that's not going to be impacted by how uh, by the tariffs. Uh, uh, energy. No, nope, we're self-sufficient. That that's going to. So we, the impact, you know, is 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 not as big as the the headline suggests. Okay. So it's only be it's only be, be super poor people like uh, like uh, Steve will have to pay uh, 20, yes. 30 percent more for for his scotch when he's importing it. Scotch, yeah. Or, <laughs> or champagne, scotch, or or something. scotch supercars, yeah. cigars, yeah. scotch yeah. and supercars. Yeah. China, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, listen, if the DYD supercar can get over here, Daddy's buying one. It's that simple. Okay, listen, yeah. we have a question hey, from a fan. We have a question. We have a question from we have a question. We have a real question from a real fan. Who knew? Who knew? Um, they want to know what we think of Project 2025 and President-elect Trump's initiatives. Specifically, how will it impact minorities? Damn. Wow, no, look at this. Look I mean, at this. He actually, no. Well, I'm, I'm, I have no skin in the game, so I mean, I can say what I think. You're not a minority. John's I mean, he said minority. he had nothing to do with it, right? Remember, he said he had nothing to do with it. So. Well, sure, because everybody, when the 997-page book came out, everyone had read it. I mean, we got a copy of it because we asked them to send us one. And I, read, I was like, what the? Literally, like, there's a red book that was written many years ago. Oh. Same thing. Um, well, like it, it was a conservative think tank that wrote it. So I, yeah, but I nothing in there is positive. You can write. Like you it. can write. You can write anything you want. You know, it has nothing and, to do and, with. And Trump and mentioned. Trump has pushed away from the book. He said, "No, I'm not going to do it." Now, whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, he said he actually had nothing to do with it and, and didn't even read. And you know what? He never grabbed that girl's pussy. Okay, so it's the same. Let's like, you know, let's, 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 let's like enough with the heat. No, no yeah. dirty words, please. What? <laughs> girl, girl's a dirty word. Okay, no. girl's a dirty word. No. Sorry. Um, grab, so, I, grab, I think was what he meant. Grab the bad no. word. Sorry, it's too soon. Um, yeah. th at the end of the day, I don't think, how do I put this? I don't think Trump sees color other than orange and green. I don't think he really cares about the minorities, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't think he really cares about black and white and men. And I don't think he cares about any of that. All Trump cares about is Trump. So whether you're white or black, male or female, purple or green, or wherever you fall on the Roy G. Biv scale, I don't think he cares. I don't even think he cares if you are you immigrated to the United States legally, does not care. All he wants is to make Donald Trump great again and make the Trump brand this mega brand. And I think for him, being the president does that for him. It also helps other business. I don't think he's going to do anything. There was an article by uh, I mean, he only, he only, morning, on immigration. You know, if he really deports all the illegal immigrants, for lack of a better term, that's 11 million people, roughly, they said. 
so are we going to have internment camps? I think, it's like World War I think it's closer to 15 now. Okay, I read 11 million this morning, but that's well, fine, 11 or 15. Uh, well, according, to Mr. according to Mr. Trump, when his election uh, speeches, it was, it was 10, it was 5, it was 10, right. it was 20, could be more. Right. So, uh, yeah, Schum number. Schumer said it could be as high as 15, actually. Okay. Yeah. Look, at uh, at the end of the day, if if okay, let's just say for some miracle they actually get to do implement this, right? Uh, it's actually good for people on the, the with on the lower scale of, of the workforce because you know that applies to to minorities, right? Well, they have to work um, twice as hard, you mean? No, they, they actually get to keep jobs and they keep yeah. to keep their salaries higher because when you introduce you know fifteen million people into the workforce that have no skills. Guess what? They, everybody, salary goes down. Yeah, but they're all being played, if, if they're illegal, they're all being played, being pay, paid black money anyway. So yeah. know, the only the only yeah. people who are going to be crying in their in their beer about that will be, you know, people who, who have enormous amounts of black money that they're trying to wash through the system. Are you no, talking okay. about dark money? Wait. They don't call it black money. They call it dark money. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, that's... No, no, no. That just... No. Cool black you, money, you're hey. in the construction business, you know, or, you know, you, are you working in the construction business, and all of a sudden, you, you get a, a deluge of people that, <laughs> that say, yeah, I work for, you know, 50% less, you know, you think they're going to... They're gonna yeah, but how are they being paid it? now, John? How are they being paid? They're not on the payroll. They're under the table. Yeah, you, pay them so, so you, a, you know, you pay, yeah, you just, go to the bank and you give them cash or you exactly, give them a check. Exactly. You can give so them a what check. Have, so you, uh, so you check. have, you have, a, you have then a whole range of, well, the che checks can be, can be, can be seen by the tax office. But if they're all being paid, um, being paid cash in hand, what, what's that going to do for the economy? No. Yeah, where's a, because somebody's washing every week a whole no, load of money through no, no, 15 no, no. million people no is that, so you is that what's see, happening you think no, they, pay them with, they pay them above the board then we pay them cash you know they pay them with a debit card with the, with cash you know i mean the, you know this, this but this how is, is that possible because it, if, it, if they are doing that then they can be found tomorrow morning because all you need to do is just look for the bank transactions no. and see these pe people don't have a national insurance number or whatever no, you no. guys call it, you and just, off you go. You just David, give them a check and you go that, to a we're, check we're cashing. We're not that country. People need housing. People need whatever the, whatever the illegals are doing. They need dishwashers. They need this. They need that. They need to do jobs that American kids don't want to do that they did before World War II and after World War II. They're doing uh, manual that, labor. So it's I mean, nobody's, it? no one's going to do anything. And granted, if he, dip, if he deports 10 million, 5 million, pick your number, that's going to hurt the country because no one's going to do the job. So you'll see, I think housing slow up unless they're going to do the 3d printing housing, then you don't need anybody. You need I mean, three you guys. Think, yeah. But I mean, do you, do you think, do you, so are you asking, are you saying that the idea of like all, all illegal immigrants are doing jobs that wouldn't otherwise be done? Like it, that's yes. a justification for remaining. Oh, no, I'm not saying it's, it's no, no, there's no justification. I'm just saying be careful when you get rid of the manual labor that American people or whatever do not want to do. You call it a high school un, kid. Unemployment, unemployment, unemployment was already at, at three or four percent before the, the unemployment immigration. Unemployment so started. wrong. Those numbers are so. skewed. Stop with this ridiculous <laughs> BS report they come out with. Because after a while, people drop off of unemployment, That's which right. means you That's don't right. count them. You have people that are underemployed you know so that have so to work so seven then, jobs. Okay, so let's so stop with this. We never came back from employment from 2008 because they couldn't figure out the number. Unemployment in America it's is probably higher, 15 then. or 20%. Whether it's underemployment. But then wouldn't that make it worse? That jobs more would get done. Jobs will get, yeah, go jobs ahead. Get, get, get done if you pay a higher salary. So, you know. Right. You know, yeah, but only if you got enough people to do it because if you have an economy which has 15 million people that are part of it now, and then you take them out of the workforce, you, they're not spending money in Walmart, they're not spending money, uh, you know, buying beer or cigarettes or whatever. I mean, sure, yeah. what happens then? 
<laughs> Why do you think illegals are are only buying cigarettes and beer? Well, because well, David think, well, stereotypes well, everything. John, do you buy just cigarettes? John, 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 John doesn't just like cigarettes and beers. I'm he goes not, out to dinner. So yeah. I'm not I am not stereotyping anybody <laughs> that is an illegal immigrant. Much. I'm merely <laughs> saying much. I'm merely saying that they are consuming. They must be consuming. If not, they'd all be mm -hmm. dying of starvation. No, they are so you're saying like so that's what that's happens that's then? Fun. Great. Said you sent them all off. They're all gone. Bye bye. But what happens to that 15 million people's worth of concert that are consuming? What happens to all that money? Where does that all go to? Well, first of all, if that would take a while to do, unless we're going to do like the 30s in Germany where we put them in a train and send them to a camp. So let's just assume our government can't well, you work that efficient. That's that already happened. Good. That happened it's in the good. 1940s. So you're, you're yeah, already that was when, that's when we had a, that's when there was only seven people in America. It was easy that, to was find a war time. that was a war yeah, time. War time. We're not at war. Oh. So it's a little oh, easier yeah. now. We may well, war, for the rhetoric from Mr. Trump, it would appear that you are at war. Well, you know, we're, the, Mr. they're Trump eating the cats. People. They're eating the dogs. They're rapists. They are. Uh, they're pedophiles. raping the cats and the dogs. That's a terrible thing. You know, I feel bad for the cats <laughs> and the dogs. So, You're like so no Brooks says, you rape the cattle and stampede the people. I got it. So but listen, all of the he, so that's that's what he's been telling everybody. So why yeah. would why would he not say now? Okay, we had uh, this. This is a war against illegal immigrants. Right. Well, we'll put a whole load of camps in the middle of the U.S. and truck everybody there, and then. Right. You know, you're well, in, we'll you're that, you're in, when you're that out. happens, we'll, when that happens, we'll do that show. And listen, at the end of the day, as long as the First Amendment stands and shows like whether it's ours or Bill Maher or John Oliver's show or these guys that make fun of Trump and he doesn't get rid of CBS and Fox because he doesn't like them. As long as you still have your First Amendment right in our country, most people are going to be good. When the First Amendment goes away. That's when people are going to be like, we're at war, but it's an internal war. Not yeah, an external that's, war. yeah, that's that's I think. I mean, don't you feel like that's a very far fetched idea to, you know, to freedom of speech would be in America, freedom of speech would be eliminated? That is a ridiculous yeah. idea. It's ridiculous uh, we'll because we'll the, see, listen, the, we'll, we'll see. The legacy, I look at it this way. The legacy media, the, no. the old media has I got it. Twenty percent of the viewership in, in you know, it it's 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 no longer a relevant uh, but Trump of, doesn't like you know, yes. No, I would agree with that, John. Terrible. I would agree with that, John. Because it's not relevant, really but it's still, it's still freedom. Only of the uh, only us oldies look at this stuff. The, the I don't look don't at TV. I watch. Care. I only watch HBO and TV. Bloomberg, so I don't know. So they don't hey, look at TV. Question. They don't look at Bloomberg or CNBC or no. or CNN. I don't own TV. Yeah, they don't even own TVs. Hey, so I have a question from a gentleman here that just wrote. I think is a black man. Not me. This is the gentleman writing it to us. I yeah. think as a black man, there are um, incentives and policies that both Trump and I align with, which is, sure, get rid of the immigrants. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, and eat the dogs. Oh. You know, I'm, just, I'm kidding. They don't eat dogs. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but I truly um, worry about the racist special interest groups that mm. will um, decrease the rights of people that look like me. Um, mm. He said, I may be incorrect. He goes, what's your view on this? Um, talk me off the ledge. Um, yeah, we have a, if you tell us where you are and you're going to jump, we want to film that live because we bring in the viewers. Um, I don't, I can't, I'm not being a black man or a person of color. I'm just a Jew. So for us, it could be the same thing. And I saw how it went for us in the 30s in Germany. Okay. I don't know uh, how it's going to go for anybody. I wonder what special. I, I wonder well, what you, special you, you must be second on the list because there's only there's 20 million of you. So the first 15 million will go, and then the 20 million Jews till that'll be the next. It's working a list down, Stephen. That's the way it works. I, see. I, I don't think I, I don't think you know Trump, you know, uh, and, and the people that surround him have an agenda to uh, to 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 bring you know I don't know laws or or, or, or some regulation to to to. Have you been asleep, John, for the last year? That's what he's been telling us. No, no, he's oh, not. In fact, no. that's why I think he got he got so much of the African American and the Latino vote. Uh, yeah, he got yeah. A lot, he got a lot of black men and a lot of Latino men voted for him because yeah, but not because of his politics, but because they were sick of 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 this sort of you know very liberal uh, you know goosey loosey politics. That's a fair question. I mean, there are, no. for, for the last for the last no, four no, years, sorry. and they've and they've yeah. been feeling it in their pockets, no, and they no, won't yeah. change. And they've yeah. been asking for change, and no one for the last four years in the U.S. 
same as in Europe. Nobody's been listening. And so therefore, okay, right, you lot are not going to listen. Well, but he, also, he, also, he wasn't, I mean, he, he does. He, you know, like during 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 the first Trump administration, um, right. black black unemployment went down to its lowest rate. Wages mm -hmm. went up for the black community higher than ever before. So I mean, people are probably looking at that too, in addition right. to maybe wanting some sort of change from today. But I'd be curious to know what those special interest groups that those racist special interest groups that he's referring to are, because yeah, there are definitely still racists in America. I just don't right. think that they have policy influence. I'm Certainly hoping. not with, I mean, even well, with this administration, I don't think they're going to have policy influence. And I think it's- Proud Boys? Were the, were the Proud Boys racist or were they just like, we're going to help you overthrow the government in January 6th? Because oh, I don't just, remember just, the Proud Boys. Just, just neo-Nazis. I think that, yeah, I, I don't know. Those are, those guys are pretty bad. And he, and Trump made it very, you know, made it very, it was very explicit in saying that, uh, you know, he wants nothing to do with neo-Nazis and, and even the Proud Boys. I mean, he said right. that. I don't think I don't those are extremist risk. groups. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's a risk of those people being put in a position where they can, you know, come up with some, you know, uh, I wouldn't say law, but maybe some, I don't know, regulation or or policy that would, you know, that they would target, uh, you know, I mean, it would just, we'd have yeah. a freaking revolution here. I mean, and, and Trump's not about social revolution, yeah. right? Yeah, he's not about the social piece of you know I don't know the the world. He's more, you know he's more business. <laughs> he wants he wants foreign policy. You know deals. You know right. he's looking for for that kind of uh, impact. And I think you know the immigration thing is well, it's it's a big thing, and you know it's part of his original policy. So I don't think you know you need to worry about it. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, it's a, it's a great question from, a, you know, it's an understandable question from someone who, you know, sounds like he's had to face, you know, right. these, these, you know, hearing from these fringe groups that are clearly racist. But uh, yeah, I don't, I just don't see any influence that they're going to have on, on this or any administration in the United States. Yeah. Now, I'm hoping well, look not. At it this way. Yeah. Uh, wow. You know, where are all the problems that 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 and who is who runs the cities and the states where we have you know racial issues you know i just leave it at that you know it's, look you mm -hmm. want to go go chicago democrat you know go to maryland democrat you know go to you know california democrat you know they're all one party states you know and they're run by those guys because mm -hmm. you know they thrive on that right Democrats well, racism. They, they, Democrats yes. yeah. thrive keep on them, racism. Keep them poor and get the votes. That's the, that's be that was the strategy. But you know what? After a couple of, keep of them decades, poor and, yes. How can it, yeah? How can it's you the, justify? How, how yeah. do you justify that, John? It's the internet. Oh, you said it, so it's true. No, so. no. How do you justify that? No, I'd be curious to know that too. Yeah, yeah, it reminds me of the you know the the the. The Peronitas in Argentina, right? They're very much like the Democrats. They always, you know, have this policy of, you know, no, we're going to help the poor. We're gonna, yeah. They give them a few mm -hmm. things, you know, around election time. They right. get the votes, and then mm -hmm. oops, uh, we forgot about you. We'll just steal yep. the country. Uh, the Democrats. Not are real. That. You're saying like not. What you're saying is like it's not those. Those groups are not talking about real empowerment of right, people who no. need help. They're talking about. You know, like a, a welfare election time handout to yeah. get a vote. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. so things like making America great again, the new golden age, um, you know, uh illegal immigrants will be deported on day one. That's that's not uh, promising uh, things. Well, let me ask you something. Just you just, know, just to get invested just to get, you know, uh, I get elected. I, I get I get your 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 sense, but uh you know, are we just supposed to just say, you know, hey, an open border, come on in, like in Europe, you know, we'll take you all in and we'll just, you know, uh, keep giving. Well, you do have the chick in the harbor, John, that says, give us your tired, your poor, and your hungry. Uh, yeah. We all hear that. My, but, you know, my great grandfather came in legally, you know. Yeah. Right? So did mine. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the I, the mean there's, I mean, I've, I've had to go through the system here to, to legally become Dutch. So I know, right. and, it's taken me, and it's taken me 40 years. So um, I know how that works. That's not the issue. The, the, the issue for me is this continuous rhetoric about 
I, going back to what John was saying about, oh, they're offering them, they're offering them candy now just to get their vote. Well, listening to what Trump's been talking about for the last year, you know, it's it's been candy every day, or as, but you know, my only well, to you, that force, my only concern is, saying, you know, it's, you don't it's, all, it's all jam tomorrow, isn't it? It's not today. You're saying he doesn't he doesn't mean it. Yes. Hmm. Well, it doesn't mean it. I just I just think that what he said is just not possible. To 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 John's point, though, without wait, wait. without John's becoming point. putting an iron fist on the table, and right. that's what's so dangerous about him because he could start pushing through executive orders right, left, and center. If he takes both houses in the U.S., uh, no, everybody's just going to wave at him as he walks through. That's right. the well, danger. Here's the here's let me just do this so we're all clear. So for the presidential election, Harris got 226 electoral votes, Trump got 295. For no, the, I think Senate, got, at the end of it, he got 317, I think. I know yes. this is what the New York Times has today. So I'm just reading the New uh, York uh, Times today, uh, right? Uh, so if it's different, I don't care. I'm just telling you what they have okay, as of uh, this morning. All right. So the US Senate, the Democrats have 45 seats, the Republicans now have 52. Tonight. And in the House. The Democrats have 199 and the Republicans have 211. So the American people, to John's point, are tired of mamby-pamby weakness. They're tired of wokeness. They're tired of all this bullshit. What the Republicans do is the Republicans do what we've always said. They say, even the whacked out ones, right? As stupid as they are and they never read a book and the earth is flat and all this other shit. At the end of the day, they are saying rhetoric that Americans, whether you were born here or you immigrated here, want to hear. They want to have a strong country and a strong government. The Democrats do not present that on their side. They present a very weak case. Anybody they have running as a candidate, other than if they brought the senator from Philadelphia or Pennsylvania and the seven foot five guy, he probably could have beaten Trump because he's a strong male. The Americans want a strong country again. Because the Americans as a whole think that we've been bullied around for the last 20 or 30 years, whether it was Republic or Democrat, and we have now an authoritarian that's going to come in. And once again, when they say make America great again, I don't know what we're making great again. Everything we have is at all-time highs, our technology, our patents, blah, 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 blah. So I'm not sure what that actually means, and no one's ever really explained it. But I, that's what they're doing. They're going to bring us back to pre-World War II. Don't you well, don't look. you I mean do you, don't you think some of the indicators are talking about average people? I mean, wages have actually gone down since COVID, um, with given given inflation, and um, you know stock market's gone great, but that only benefits a, a select group of, of right. individuals. Yeah, you think? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's just. Look, you know, he, Steve says, I don't know what America, yeah, it, it's pretty simple. The U.S. and Europe also, you know, Europe is, is even worse than, than the U.S., has totally de-industrialized. De Look, right. you know, 30 years ago, you know, 40 years ago, you know, the U.S. had, you know, I don't know, 20 shipyards. They have three shipyards today. Yep. They they barely, they barely can do the... Uh, you know, um, they can, they can't build ships for the navy. They don't have we don't have precision welding skills anymore. You know, we have all sorts of issues at the industrial level. And if you know, you lose the industry. You know, I mean, you lose a lot of you know middle to lower you know jobs. And well, and, you know, and Michael, Michael Collins. And just the John, the Michael thing Collins. is, I mean, who so who does who made that decision? American industrialists that were more concerned about yeah, yeah, no, that, well, yeah. that's what yeah, that's 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 always talks about. It's the multinationals yeah. that made that decision over exactly. 30 years. I wants to bring them all back. Yeah. So, I you know, yeah. I mean, so, about, so, uh, make America, make America great us, again. I mean, you, you kind of gave it all away as, as we did in Europe. But shipyards yeah. don't yeah. make us great again. What we have to go back to then is, if you will, oh, that's just make an example America great again. I don't know, I understand that, but to make America great again, then you have to go back to the fundamentals of parenting education and work it up like you know you need to actually teach the idiots that go to school not the crap you teach them today because these kids don't know shit they don't know shit at the university level so if you're not going to bring the education level back america's not going to be great america's just going to be in your likeness 
So just because you're going to say to a business, if you do business elsewhere, you have a factory elsewhere, you're not going to be able to sell in the United States or I'm going to put a 500% tariff on you. Okay, well, there's a lot bigger world than the United States. So things like that don't work. You have to start at the very foundation to make America great again. Yeah. You have to then oh, that's, start that's, educating. That's what... Let me finish. You have to let it, you have to start educating the children now. You have to start yeah, in bringing back um, I forgot technical schools or have, you know, like when yeah. I went to school, yeah. you could take welding, you could take carpentry, you could do, right. we don't do that anymore, right? We give them an iPad and go, good luck, God bless. So if he really wants to, lack of a better term, make America great again, then we need to go back to the foundation and the basics that made America well, the fact, great. The foundations of make America great again are, are, are in eugenics, which is basically saying that white people are superior. Oh yeah, that, where did you get that? I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah, the eugenic movement has its roots in in the mega in mega. It's the beginning of the 20th century. Hitler, uh, uh, the Germans were there was a very uh, uh, lots of people. Scott Fitzgerald, for instance, was very active in it. A lot of people were active in it, and they were basically saying, "Keep the bloodlines clean." It's it's, yeah, guys, yeah, but we're not there. It's funny you say that we're because not there. The, yeah, the creator of Planned Parenthood was was all into eugenics. And we yeah, support, well, you know, the, the par yeah. Let me ask it's, you guys this. What so about, keep um, in, keep, check it what out, about guys. climate change and whatnot? Because Trump's not a believer in climate change. He's going to, he says he wants to get rid of COP29. Like we're pulling, we pulled out of the Paris Accords. What do we think about um, that? What do we think about climate change? Um, what are you going to do with the EPA? And then the second question is, he wants to get rid of the guy at the SEC because he's all for crypto this week because he has his own exchange now. So what do we think about all of that as as our new president steps in? I, for crypto, it's great. Um, for climate change, yeah, I don't really care. I, yeah. that's well, that's that's not well, here, but how that's going to work? What do you guys think? COP29, the Azerbaijanis are already using it as, their, uh, as a showroom. They've been offering people uh, secret meetings so they can talk about all their oil. So um, yeah, that's the way to do it. Have uh, have it as a uh, a climate conference, and then uh, sell lots of oil to lots of interesting people at the same time. Look, uh, you know, the whole climate change, you know, I don't know, par you know, not in a paranoia, but implementing all the, you know, the let's kill fossil fuels and and, right. and obliterate ourselves, you know, is 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 ridiculous i mean the idea that you can get off you know fossil fuels you know and just don't have a plan uh you, you don't have the 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 technology to 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 store energy is 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 suicide yeah, infrastructure and yeah. two you know and the second thing is you know you know in britain they you know they're doing all sorts of things it doesn't matter it doesn't it, it's 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 a i don't know pimple in, on your ass you know it, it makes no difference and and you obliterate your country Unless China and India come on board, you don't have. You're not gonna. You're not gonna change anything. And what, well, there's a and, there's a sort of hypocrisy here as well, isn't it? Because on the backs of all these wonderful, pristine countries throughout the whole world, the industrial revolution, you know, and, and the West plowed its way through as much, you know, cut cut down as I much trees as they possibly could. From, from you know, I don't know, it's success guilt or something. You, you guys in Europe, you know, you just gotta well, get yeah, off yeah, of it. Yeah, because yeah, you know, well, what you else? see, the thing is, but but we we caused all the pro problems in the first place, and well, here we, we are saying a lot of goods, right? Uh, you know, we also Africa saying to people, be... oh, you know, like don't 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 burn stuff. Oh, we've already burned our, our lot, but don't burn any yourself. And they're just saying, well, yeah, well, that's not how it works, guys. I mean, we didn't make a mess out of this. The West did. And now you're well, asking that's us why, to that's work. why any that's why any I mean don't you think then that if if that's true, don't you think then that any any plan needs to include necessarily uplifting the the economies that you want to encourage to get off of fossil fuels? And what has cop what what have these plans done to to, to do that? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, it's a Look, if, if you if you increase yeah. renewables, you know to 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 a huge to to the to, let's just say to the majority of electricity production you need huge huge battery you know energy storage and we well, are and, not and there, mining, right? 
and, and the right. mining for the for yeah. the yeah forget the mining you rob, you rob peter to pay paul basically you don't have That's the batteries to support that. it right right and yeah. so when they're a small part you know of, of the total energy production okay it's not a big deal and right? you can cope with it but as it becomes a bigger part of the energy production you know renewables are not you know you can't you know when the wind doesn't doesn't blow uh you don't have energy production when yeah. the sun doesn't when shine, the sun doesn't shine yeah yeah I and it's I've, just, I've had five days of cloud here and we've produced nothing right. so there yeah, you go you've got a solar right yeah what do yeah. you got so unless you have a battery system that 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 can support days of, of yeah, no well, the battery the battery system is is like uh your half host. of our daily uh, so, half of our daily consumption so that doesn't mm. help so and it would, cost, it would cost 10,000 euros to have, uh, you know, like, because uh, we're a thousand euros a kilowatt. Yeah, that, that's you. Well, I think that's what that, that's John. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that is that the criticism then is that uh, of the of the climate change narratives today is that they're not really offering uh, a reasonable solution to getting off of fossil fuels because so many of them call for the immediate end right. of fossil yeah. fuel consumption with no plan to actually yeah. Yeah. yeah there's no this this the the first concept is uh, or, or idea is okay just just turn off a fossil fuel we're yeah, going to stop producing them and and okay okay so how are we going to survive uh well we will have renewables but you know as you know we know no wind no electricity no right. sun no electricity oh uh, i don't know maybe they're ostrich in the sand and they don't they don't they're not thinking about that a uh, wave wave power because you got a lot of waves in arizona yeah but <laughs> yeah you got a lot of sun in arizona so that'd be nice yeah, yeah so for them somehow solar that has a great thing you yeah, know made a, a huge happen. impact uh, so so that's i think we've said that listen i've been doing cato protocol stuff with red for 30 years and yeah. i always said this is really a cute scam especially carbon credits and all that other crap i said this is a great scam and it's good because you make lots of money if you will, but at yeah, the end it's of the had day, no impact. It's had no, it has impact, no impact at all. Like at all. Do, it did because, and when we did the thing in Bolivia, it flowed back to the indigenous people, which was great because they got to do stuff with it. But really, yeah. at the end of the day, it doesn't do anything. So, us leaving the accord, I don't see that as like, oh my God, we're it's, yeah, okay, good, come up with a plan. So, I think some of Mr. Trump's, we're going to do this, we're going to, I think it, it, he may be stupid like a fox. It's making people, whether it be NATO, or the COP29 to go, oh shit, we have to come up with a real plan. And I think maybe that yeah. that's a positive. We'll have to see NATO, how it plays out. NATO actually yeah. is, you know, non, non-US NATO countries actually are spending more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they have no choice because now they're worried because they're afraid if yeah. Russia rolls no, but, in on the Ukraine, they're going to actually yeah. have to do their jobs. No, it's, so it's good that we need the Chinese and the Indians to, to, to actually commit, co you know, how are they going to commit to, to 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 reducing their fossil fuel uh they're not footprint. They're not. you know it's they're impossible not. i was going right? to say because you're going to say you didn't that's do a, it so that's what a you huge, they already said that. Impact. what do we think about yeah. the sec what do we think about the sec, the SEC chair mm -hmm. that Trump, donnie donnie doesn't like him because donnie thinks he's a crypto he doesn't know even enough about crypto wants to remove him and then donnie's also now has his um own crypto exchange where you can buy and sell cryptos and whatever what do we think of that do we think that mr trump has to remove himself from that or what do we think is going to happen to the sec and crypto uh, mm. yeah, good. jump in um yeah. and john you should read some of the comments people are actually saying you know what you talk about which is rare that we even see somebody write something like that so congratulations glad we got engagement all right <laughs> guy said all right. uh to john's point these companies oh, won't you. completely go green until 2032 but without any alternative, but it doesn't say we have only. So same thing we just said. Very good. Somebody agrees with you, John. Congratulations. I got to send that guy a check now. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, no, but seriously. <laughs> so you look at, I, I'm not a fan of, of crypto algorithms to an extent. To another extent, I think it's great. If, they're, if we can finally figure out how to use them daily. But since every government has their own crypto, if you will, their own digital currency, I'm still waiting for the day when, like, the, I don't know whether it's yeah, Mr. When Trump or someone down the road, they wake up the... one day and go, you know, this crypto stuff, eh, we'll use ours. And they wipe it all out. So that's where that's where I get nervous. Other than that, I think it's a great idea because it's easy because it, it's like a credit card, right? I can go and do whatever. So in that respect, I'm okay. In another respect, 
I do think it's a security that needs to be regulated a little more, um, you know, based on the on the UE test and all the other stuff. And then others of them aren't. It's just tokenization. So I think we need to come up, whether it's this guy or a new guy or a crypto czar, then you kind of have a definitive, this is what it is, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then I would be like, oh, okay, then it's good. But we well, don't a lot have more that. definition. Yeah, the, yeah. You know, what you're saying is a lot more definition needs to happen even around what what is crypto, what counts as crypto versus what, what tokenization. Because tokenization, tokenization, people are like tokenizing real estate, Everything. and I'm okay Everything. with that. Yeah, and I'm fine. Art, I, I understand it. One. Yeah, I mean, even the Four Seasons is doing that, and I'm like, no problem. Now my question is. Security or not security? Because is is it like buying a stock? No, yeah, that's a that's or a big it's no different than me, if you will, going to Vegas and you know, Daddy needs a pair of shoes and roll the dice and I win or I lose. Is that what tokenization of, if you will, real estate will be? So to me, it's kind of like let's just define it a little more, so we can then if it's going to be a billion dollar or trillion dollar industry, which it kind of already is, then we can make it bigger and make it better, and we're all playing with the same handbook to an extent. Like by now it's still the wild west, which has me, has me a little concerned. It's like the stock market before, you know, the 32, the 34 and the 35 acts came in, you know, we remember 1929. So Bill John remembers that he was around. Um, but I'm just <laughs> saying it's like 1929. And, and that's kind of what my, my concern would be is mm-hmm. like, one day all these crypto billionaires are going to wake up and they're going to be worth zero, which then will hurt the economy because they're spending money globally not just in the United States. Right. I don't know. I just, you know. You got to have somebody. I mean, I, I think yeah. he's got a good good point. You got to have somebody who's at least willing to have the crypto conversation because it is right. a global phenomenon and you, you can't afford to get left behind as the United States, yeah. you know, being the, the global financial yeah. source of stability and not have a conversation about crypto. So. And do and Dubai, or if you will, I should say Abu Dhabi is like and Dubai are trying to be like the crypto They're leaders. So deep into it. And they are. When you go there and you go to their exchanges and their crypto people and you start talking to them about how can we can they're like, oh, you can tokenize like they're there. So is Switzerland. And I'm kind of like, um, what, what 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 about us? Like we're America, we should be doing it. And people do it, but they do it's like then like one attorney general of a state will go, No, no, that's a that's a security you can't. And then another attorney general will go, No, it's it's fine. So I'm just saying, I think if we get a law wrapped around it, it'll be much easier to say, oh, let's do this and this and this. Because a lot of people I know that are, have companies that are doing crypto are not doing them in the United States. And there's uncertainty around it for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and that's a bad thing. Uh, well, let me I think, you know, we need. Sorry, sorry. I, was, I was going to say we, we, we need some clarity as to where pre- people stand uh, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and, and not put roadblocks. But, uh, you know, uh, I. I <laughs> What's the economic benefit of this? I don't see. I haven't seen the use case for for for, for crypto at this stage because, you know, uh, it's not like a currency. It's a pain right. in the ass. Uh, it uses a lot of resources. Yeah, it consumes a hell of a lot of electricity. For for what? For nothing. And uh, I, I think I, I mean, some would it go it. the same way as gambling went as well? In this, you know, when you guys had this gambling problem, that it'll be done on a state by state basis. Yeah, and then you'll have you'll have a state somewhere in the middle of the U.S. will have its own little mini well, nuclear power now. station, and David. they'll run the crypto exchange. What what happens now is that someone will do an ICO, and for build an ICO is an initial crypto offering, and they'll do it out of Singapore or the UAE, but they may be based in the United States. So what ends up happening is is people will buy it in certain states because they'll file all the paperwork like they're supposed to. Will be like, okay, it's not a security, you're good. And then other states are like, oh no, it's a security. So they'll get in trouble in mm. XYZ state, not in the United States as a whole. And that's what I'm saying, whether it's the SEC or it becomes, you know, Securities and Exchange Commission Bureau, a new entity, right? That says, okay, here's how we define crypto, tokenization, um, NFTs. And we just have a definition that's, whether it's broad or it's concise, but enough that when someone says, I wanna do a crypto for lack of a better term transaction, or a tokenization or an NFT deal, there's a guideline, not just a Howey test, where you look at that and go, oh, okay, it's this, it's that, that means it's total. That's nice, but then when an attorney general in another state interprets it a different way, now I'm yeah, screwed, you can't, you right? can't have that inconsistency. Right. Yeah. So that's why everybody's going outside the United States, and the United States is like, we're losing stuff. So I think to, tr- to give Trump some kudos 
if he brings not somebody that has to be crypto friendly, but somebody can at least draft a law that people can look at that and go, oh, okay, I get it. So oh, that yeah. I think I think that would be really cool. We do have a question on what we uh, our approach to increasing your liquid net worth, blah blah blah. Unfortunately, we don't do investment <laughs> advice on this show, so that nope. is not so that yeah yeah that's something you got to talk to a professional about. We have our own opinions, but those are our <laughs> opinions, and we can't give those out because that's a whole nother show. And uh, then none of us. Well, we are, should get a, We should get. We can get a guest on increasing. Yeah, we can get like a registered rep or a financial advisor yeah, to talk about in the Trump era what he would do. But for us, that what we do is. For our stuff, we can't tell you. We can tell you, but we can't do it for advice. entertainment purposes. Yeah. yeah, this is it. That's what we do. Yeah. So, uh -huh. but yeah. So, and then Iran. Okay. I guess the next one is Iran. He's going to Biden let them sell oil to make oil cheap for everybody, and now Trump is going to apparently on day one crush them again, which is no export notice um, until they get rid of all their nukes. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm good with that. I have no problem. No, I'm good with that. I wish the Democrats they shouldn't have that. had. Yeah, Iran shouldn't have gotten that kind of uh deal yeah. in the first place i think they, yeah. they've, they've been so aggressive to the west and yeah. uh you know why and why give them why give them the money to do what they want to do yeah well, i agree sort of pay back for the cia yeah because uh, yeah. America, america, CIA did america nothing wrong <laughs> america america created uh, the problem in it's, iran and listen the cia it, never right? does anything wrong it's the cia they're they're angels yeah. um yeah. Yeah. and then you have let's see so we've covered iran we covered we didn't cover. We didn't cover our, our favorite the, topic, the, which the is the French should never have, have let have let let uh, Khomeini leave France. They should have put him in prison. That's true. Mm, that's man, true. They should have I never left. I never understood that. that. They just wanted to get rid of him. Why didn't you just kill him? Yeah. I never understood why. If that never well, happened, I mean, the, Shah, already, the, Shah already, wasn't, the Shah wasn't like the nicest guy on the planet. I get that, but. It, at least maybe you could have had some more of a, a democratic society and a society that's like, let's kill every American. And I'm assuming it's not all of them. There's a percentage of them. Yes, I understand. But really, the, that's the perception out there is like, you know, they just yeah, want to kill I mean, the, sh the, Shah had, the, the Shah had already promised Khomeini that, uh, that uh, Shia, uh, Shia, Shia law mm -hmm. would, be, would be in place under his reign. And he went back on that. And that's mm. what uh, started the bad blood. And then, yeah, so they have to ship him off yeah, to somewhere. Well, but the reason why he went back to Iran is because someone paid him, paid his air ticket to get him there, I think. Mm. You know, and know and then he, get, he gets off the plane, kisses the ground. Well, what can I say? When are you, when are you, is part of your Dutch citizenship, are you converting soon to? <laughs> well, to, riding sure? to, to riding bicycles. I'm, yeah. I'm a dual national. I'm a dual national, and 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 a diehard Church of England, John. So yeah. um, we're, we're we're okay. Don't get, we don't need don't we don't need we don't need any virgins because I'm going to heaven anyway. Yeah. Well, look, you know, you'll have, you'll have a choice: you either convert or they kill you. You know, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's just yeah. I uh, kill you. No. Thank you. Know. you. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, the, it's on the way there, but uh, you know, it's. That's a different show. Well, no, well, actually, I think at, at the moment I'm, ta I'm taking Russian lessons. So uh, that, that's, uh, okay, that's, your next, that's your next thing you're going to do? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, we didn't, so we, we didn't talk, about, we we didn't talk about AI. We didn't talk about AI oh, because no, that's, that's, that's awesome. another show. he's opening it up. He's like, he's like, remember we had Michael Collins last week. You guys can watch the show. Go to the, the playlist. You'll see Lost Dollar Club, Michael yeah. Collins, or go to the live side. But Michael, I said to Michael Collins, the AI is the, uh, the wild, wild west. It's just going to run amok. And Trump literally said, AI is the wild, wild west. We're going to let it run amok. And I'm like, love that. I'm like, go, buddy. Let it go. Because he wants to make, and all the tech idiots that know nothing are all saying the same thing. I was like, we have to let AI. But but it is an arms race between us and China. Well, that's so what, letting that's, AI go. That's the, that's the position that he was yeah. that he was. Yeah, talking and I'm good about. with that. And I Kudos to him because for that. Fair, because he I, got mean, balls. A, I think it's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we, and we brought that up on last week's show, which was excellent. With Michael, um, yeah. Yeah, but I think you do have to let AI just go. I don't think you put guardrails. I, you just let it go. And at some point, it's already – doesn't you already let it out of the bag. You can't guardrail it. Well, I mean, you can, you can guardrail it by who, by who actually is doing the research and where you're actually keeping the data centers and where you're actually – Not you really. Know, who, actually, who, who retains control over the super intelligence? Nobody. No, Once it gets the super Chinese. intelligent, Michael, nobody, we, the, the AI companies that we work with, when I talk to them and they'll tell you once it's out, it's out. 
all they did is they gave birth to it. And once it starts running, it's no one's controlling it anymore. But it's who births it first. Okay. Who does real conjugate AI, not this AAL, ML, USC crap where it's Excel and books, but who's really going to birth real AI that can actually have thought and do things? That's the superpower. Right now, we, we, you know, AI is a parrot. So I think as it gets to the next level, that's where the difference will be. So if Trump's going to let it, I mean this in a good way, run amok, that will probably let America grow quicker than China. Well, that's what um, I mean. That's what that's what a, a lot of the pundits were saying is that we just don't we we don't want to risk not innovating in AI right. for the sake of regulations, which probably won't do much good in the end anyway. Right. I agree. Yeah. yeah, but that's my point. I'm all for that. Like I said, I never. I only didn't like Mr. Trump for 10%, and that was the democracy thing. The other 90% about policy that the Republicans have and the other things, I'm all, I'm like, go. I'm all for business. The only other policy I get worried about is his schedule F where he can fire any employee, like you're not, you're not a, light, a job for life anymore. I'm, I'm like kind of okay with that. And then some of it I'm not because like you can't start firing lifers at the CIA that protect us or the NSA or agencies that people don't know about. That's the only other thing I'm a little skeptical about. And then some other comments, but other than that, his business friendliness or his tax cuts or everything like that, I'm like, go, because you can only make America not great, but stronger financially, economically, technology. When it comes to military, I think we're pretty strong. I don't know how much stronger we're going to get if we become isolationists. I mean, if we're going to pull ourselves from all our bases or something, I don't know. He's never said that, but if you go isolationist, that's kind of what happens. So I'm not sure where that's going to end up. And I haven't read anything or seen anything on what he wants to do with the military. So there's a few questions, but I mean, time will tell. So I think it's going to be a, for Saturday Night Live, it's going to be a fun four years. And for us, I think it's going to be a fun four years to talk about, you know, something Trumpist at least once or twice a month. Um, yeah, that he's if, done. If, if he hasn't closed this down, but uh, yeah, he won't close this down. He'll be a yeah, guest on the show next week, Michael. <laughs> so, right. like I told you, we sent the Trump campaign, the Harris That's campaign, right. David did the that, North right? Koreans, Putin, and I forget who else. David asked to come on the show, and the only response David got back was from Putin saying, "Thank you." We'll get back with you in six months or so. So uh, yeah. six months is almost up, Putin. So <laughs> so we reach yeah. out to people, and the Russians were the we only do. one that got back to us. So there we, we go. I don't know what to tell you. So, so uh, but that's it. What else do we have before we go into Lost and Found, boys? Do we cover we, everything? We have an ad, but we have to pay a bill. That's what oh, we're okay. Let's pay a bill. Ah. So let's do that then. Get the freedom and the flexibility of remote work in the lucrative tech industry. Bend your life around, around the world. Bendicoot is the premier course and community for thriving in a remote tech career. Join the revolution today. Bendicoot.com, official partner of the Lost Dollar Business Club. You know, I wonder what Trump thinks about remote work. We should find out. We should ask. David, should reach out to his out. Press people. You should reach out to his work. press people. That's it, David. Just reach out well, to his you press know, you know, he, he, his some people in his administration have talked about you know rural investments and uh, yeah. remote work is directly tied to enhancements in rural uh, rural economy. We have one last question. Someone says, "What do you think of the tax cuts potentially affecting middle class, the middle and lower classes?" I I think they did tax cuts the last time that I think went across they the board. Good. They were good. They were good again. For, yeah, for I think they'll be good again. Yeah, like I said, I have no problem with what he does and when he does. This no, summer, this this point. I mean, the last, yeah, those those tax cuts. I mean, they were beneficial to a lot of middle and low income people yeah. last time. So why not? Again? do it again. I think. Listen, like I said, economically, we're going to kick ass for the next four years, and that's where. I, and that's I think. Well, I don't you care if you a bet on that. Are you placing a crypto bet on that? Yeah, I'm placing yeah. a crypto bet on that. <laughs> no, I mean realistically, like when I talk to people globally, they all say the same thing. Like economically, America is probably going to do really well. Um, but who will do really well? That's where we start getting into a breakdown of. Well, let's remember, things. you know, past four years, greatest transfer of wealth, you know. I'm aware. Yeah. But, but my, so the question then is going to be the next four years, what it looks like. And, yeah. you know, Mr. Musk is going to come in as the, I don't know, the cleaner upper of stuff. 
And we talked about this last week about him and his SpaceX. He got something done in 18 months that NASA couldn't do and blah, blah, blah. So if he's going to get rid of bureaucracy and make, um, that's where you make America great. Like enough with all the red tape just to get stuff done. And we can go, that's where light years ahead of everybody. Mm -hmm. And you become the superpower again, where you get rid of layers and layers of BS. Now you've done something. And in my mind, if they do that, then yes, then they will be good, bad, or indifferent, one of the greatest administrations ever because they got rid of all the BS. But if they're just more BS, then you're just going to be like everybody else. You know what I mean? So it'll be interesting to see how that fares itself through. So we'll see. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm hopefully optimistic. And if not, uh, I have 17 different passports in 87 houses. There you go. Right. Yeah. I can live anywhere. So, <laughs> Dubai is a very nice place. It's very warm, but I like it. <laughs> you can move to, to Amsterdam where they're throwing people into the canals. No, no, I'm going to live with my people in Dubai <laughs> on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the island of the Palm where all the rich people live and negated. Yeah. And they don't have to talk to commoners. <laughs> The lower taxes or the maintaining the taxes that they're about to expire is going to be good, you know, because if not, we would have had uh, chaos. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be a fun ride. So um, hopefully optimistic. And, and, watch again, it and watch it here on the Lost yeah, Island. We'll, we'll go through it. And then we will hopefully optimistic. If you have questions like this week when we do live, let us know. And if you want to be a guest on the show. Um, we would love to have. I was going to uh, say, I've, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been reaching out to some people, but it's been difficult to find someone to talk about a few different topics that I was interested right. in, like the Zempic and those anti-aging uh, drugs right. that are coming out. Um, not gotten a lot of response, so we do have the rest of the month open. So if we can find a yes, guest you for you know one of the upcoming Fridays, you know, send your recommendations in because we have those open. The next one that's really scheduled is Corey Doctorow in uh, our great anyway. antitrust global yeah. global t- thinker and writer from Canada. Uh, but that's in January. So we've got time to fill before then. Very cool. All right, boys, you know what time it is? Ever wonder how millions vanish into thin air or how a single dollar can make all the difference? Join us on Lost and Found, where we dive into the wild world of financial mysteries. From misplaced fortunes to unexpected windfalls, we unravel the stories of people, companies, organizations, and even governments who've lost and found millions. Lost and found because every dollar has a story. Oh, that's going to be really cool in 2025. (laughs) Every government has a story? Never mind. Anyway, John, because you're always so prepared, what do you have this week for Lost and Found? Uh, Look... Going back to the uh, energy stuff, uh, Duke I, Energy CFO was saying that uh, with Trump in office, they they were planning to to close a couple of plants, the co co burning pl- plants, uh, and maybe converting them to natural gas. But uh, they think that maybe they they might mm-hmm. just actually. Keep them as coal burning <laughs> plants. Uh, we just have to see you know, how That's things awesome. work out. So I thought that was rather interesting. <laughs> oh, so we do, there's no climate change. There's nothing to worry about. Let's burn that coal. Burn, baby, burn. Yeah. There you go. We at the Lizard yes. People Foundation want to thank so you. I don't know. I don't know what David thinks of that. Is it a win or is it a lo- loss? You just you just put the you just put the buzzer for the, the loss. Yeah, I thought he hit the negative on that. Yeah, he hit the and negative the other, button for that one. The, other I, thing I, is, the uh, negative was just for just for John. Just in general. Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> well, sorry, John. Yeah. Also, the Fed the lowered interest rate the the Fed funds rate by twenty five basis points again. So. Yep. I, uh, I think it, that's a small dollar win, I guess. For yeah, it's in the right and, and they, they were yeah. talking about that all morning on Bloomberg this morning about that, what that really looks like for the markets and whatever. And like, they're, it's very interesting. They're, like fifty percent say this, fifty. I'm like, all right. So nobody knows. So I think more telling will be what happens um, second quarter of next year. I think that's when we'll. I think we'll get something. I don't know. Yeah. What do I know? I read a book. So, Michael, what do well, you have for I've us? Got, this, this is filed under the um, uh, the beatings will continue until morale improves uh, department. <laughs> because uh, Intel, you know, which is undergoing some huge financial challenges and they're trying to slash $10 billion from their annual expenditures. Right. Uh, they're targeting 
a hundred million dollars, which is a drop in the bucket, uh, that's being spent on free and discounted food and beverages like coffee and fruit for their employees. And it was such a bad cut that uh, they cut the fruit, but they brought back the coffee right. because uh, morale has been so devastated. And oh they my God. another, another oh. you know, the camel, straw on the camel's back. So they brought back the coffee, but you still can't get fresh fruit at Intel if you work there. <laughs> so sorry oh, to report. Good. Unless you're in San Francisco. Anyway, so and you can get all the fresh fruit you want. Mm -mm -mm. So anyway, for the people in San Francisco. All right, this one's a funny one. This will be sports. We'll get let's just get we'll get to something stupid. <laughs> get away from all the serious stuff for a minute. Michael Jordan. For you people that don't remember Michael, he was one of the world's greatest basketball players at one time. Number twenty three for the Chicago Bulls. Air Michael, Jordan. Is, get those Michael, Air Jordan. Yep, there you go, Michael owns a NASCAR racing championship team that's actually doing very well. And Michael is suing NASCAR for alleging anti-competitive behavior in the car racing empire that's going on. So Michael um, is suing NASCAR, even though his team is doing great. He's just saying they're very anti-competitive. The whole yeah. article is in the Wall Street Journal today. You can read it. I thought that was fascinating. Um, that he's doing that. He's still he's still fair. It's either, it's and, either yeah, exactly. it's been. He's still fair and antitrust is still a popular topic. Yeah. And and but it's but it, the fact that and I was we had a gentleman earlier that was black that was asking us questions. You now here's a, a gentleman of color, Michael Jordan, made his money playing basketball, bought his, bought his basketball team, and now he's ventured out, like kind of like um um Mike um Michael Irvin did, right? You know, did his thing. And he, they've become successful businessmen, yeah. not just counting on their sports. But I love the fact that he's doing six, like NASCAR is like, what, 99.999% white people. So he's literally doing, he's be successful in NASCAR. And NASCAR is basically not behaving professionally enough, which I, stalker. <laughs> and he's suing them for that. And to me, that is like, mwah. That is the best. So congratulations to Mr. Jordan. I hope your team does really well, and I hope you win your lawsuit and you bring fairness to it. Kind of feels like almost F1. Dollar so, one. We'll see. Yeah, I got to love that's a dollar, that's a dollar one. David, what do you have? Here's a video. You know he has a video. Yeah, I got, I got a little, little ditty. Um, <laughs> um, the thing is, guys, like, because I'm, I'm, I'm a bit sort of, as probably most people are now, sort of, you know, absolutely brain dead from all the election stuff. And um, I thought, well, OK, let's look for something interesting as regards food, because there's always you know, there's always something happening in the, in, in the food thing. Um, and then uh, I thought, well, yeah, and I read this thing about um, where there's these uh, they've hidden all these these messages from UFOs. I thought, Blimey. That's true. so I thought, yeah, so I thought I kind of kind of did this. I kind of like, thought, OK, UFOs and food. So um, this is basically what I found. And before I start, it definitely gets to this. <laughs> and here we go. Hey guys, have you ever heard of UFO Burgers? They finally made their way to Austin. Spinning Buns is a new restaurant that's serving the UFO Burger from Korea. What made this burger so popular in Korea was the fact that these burgers were pressed together to make UFO shapes sealing in all the juices and flavor and making this burger relatively mess free. They have multiple options here with their savory option costing around $10 or less, coming with a side salad as well. This is their classic option that comes with an all beef patty, onions, their housemade sauce, also comes with cheese and pickles. We also got the chicken spin that comes with fried chicken, cheese, and more. That's brilliant. So there you go. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> so, well, where else do you get food and UFOs? <laughs> Well, I'm now we got to go to Austin. That's close to you. Oh, even. That's it. Pack up. We're going to Dubai. That's it. We're done. <laughs> that is it. That's the straw. I can live with Trump. UFO burgers. In. I cannot live with it. That's it. We're done. Yeah, but so. it keeps all the juices in. That's brilliant. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, there, you, and of course, we And of course, we live in Austin. I'm not, trust, I will not go. Let me, I went to one of these places that was on an Instagram thing that David just showed once. It said it had the best burger. And I went there. The burger was crap. It was the worst thing I've ever ate. So no, uh, this I'm not yeah. saying this is crap. 
Well, but no, I will not go there because then I will tear it apart. Well, you see, this is all crossover marketing, you see, because it was about it was done in North in South Korea. So uh, probably Vicky's already tasted one. So you know, I don't think so. Vicky would have done show. a video on it. Vicky would have sent uh, us a video. Well, we'll have to tell Vicky to go she, find one. She's behind the curve, then, Stephen. That's all I can say. Well, she is fire her. You know what? I keep telling you to send her to North Korea. You don't listen. I don't yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> UFOs and burgers, America at its best, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so once again, to the Republican Party, kudos to you for actually knowing how to run a presidential and a senatorial and a governor and every other campaign that you guys want. So congratulations. Next week, Mikey, it's just us again? It's just us again for now. Okay. And if you are a Republican and you would like to come on, or a Democrat and would like to come on, we would love to hear from you. Just to hear your take on the election or Trump or what's going on. If you're someone that works at the SEC, love to talk to you about crypto, or if you're one of the crypto guys. And we can validate that you're real. You just can't come on our show and talk to us like, you know. You can't send an AI avatar. No, you can. That would be really cool, but that'll last about a minute, and then we'll be done with you. So, <laughs> anyway, everybody, thank you for watching. We'll see you next Friday at eight thirty in the morning, um, Eastern Time, live, and the rebroadcast is on Saturday mornings. If you miss any part of the show, um, thank you once again. Thank you for all the questions we got from all the people that were yeah, watching. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe and like. Anything you want to end with, John? John's an avatar. He doesn't. Have a no, problem. that's it. <laughs> 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 Thank you.